My name is Emily Levine. I'm a park ranger here at Lowell National Historical Park in Lowell, Massachusetts. Right now we're standing in front of the Boot Cotton Mills. The Boot Cotton Mills were a cotton textile company. They made cotton cloth from the 1830s through the time that they closed in the 1950s. So they had a pretty long, long run. Lowell was a field trip that we did several times when I was in elementary and then middle school. I remember coming here and just being really overwhelmed by the size of these buildings. They just have a presence and a weight that made quite an impression on people, you know, 200 years ago coming here, and me as well, coming here from a fairly small town as a, as a kid on a field trip. The first workers who come to Lowell are recruited from northern New England family farms, young women who are perhaps on struggling family farms, perhaps looking for some sort of new occupation, looking for some new opportunity. Lucy Larkham was a young woman who came to work, or first to live in Lowell in the 1830s. Lucy Larkham's mother, Lois, comes to run a boarding house. Eventually, the finances are still sort of a strain here in Lowell. By the time she's 11 years old, Lucy goes to work in the spinning room of the Lawrence Manufacturing Company. She goes in with some excitement as a little girl. I mean, she's a little girl, she's 11 years old, she's sort of a little bit tired of school, and initially she sees mill work as a new adventure. So I went to my first day's work in the mill with a light heart. The novelty of it made it seem easy, and it really was not hard, just to change the bobbins on the spinning frames every three quarters of an hour or so, with half a dozen other little girls who were doing the same thing. Quickly, the novelty does begin to wear off. She does not particularly enjoy the work in Lowell. She doesn't have a particularly mechanical mind. She doesn't enjoy the machinery. She doesn't enjoy the environment and the close noise. But she has this very strong core belief in the value of work. The young women who were working in the factories in Lowell in the early period, so when Lucy Larkin was here in the 1830s, were governed by a very, very rigorous schedule. Part of their contract to work in the mill, if they're a young woman, is that they're required to live in company-built housing. So they're living in the boarding houses with anywhere between 20 and 40 other young women who are working in the same factory that they are. Lucy lives in a bedroom very, very much like this one. She shares that space with her sister. She writes a lot of short poems and increasingly longer compositions in the evenings after work and she starts to share those with her sister and begin creating that early literary journal. Also comes out of the boarding house bedrooms very much like this one. I knew I should write. I could not help doing that, for my hand seemed instinctively to move towards pen and paper in moments of leisure. The Lowell Offering is probably the best known and most widely circulated of the magazines. It begins being published in the early 1840s and uh, continues publication through 1845. It has poems, it has essays, it has short stories, it has opinion pieces about um, life in the mills, about political issues of the day. Right now we are in the weave room of the Boot Cotton Mills Museum. We are surrounded by about 88 early 20th century era power looms. When Lucy Larkham worked in the, in the mills in Lowell, there was a weave room. It had machines that were very similar to this, a little bit more basic, but very similar, very noisy, very crowded, close together. Lucy Larkham, as we said, was, was never particularly fond of the machinery. She really felt like all of the different moving parts and buzzing, whirring gears were sort of beyond her and sort of strange and a little bit unsettling. I defied the machinery to make me its slave. Its incessant discords could not drown the music of my thoughts if I would let them fly high enough. I think that the word that sort of captures the experience for me is that it's just overwhelming and that it's really difficult to imagine, although I try every time I walk through here, the impact of 20 times that number of looms actually running. It goes beyond noise and it's almost an emotional experience. And so that's an emotional experience that I had as you know a 13 and 14 year old. And it's an emotional experience that I still have today walking through the weave room. 